Hello everyone, it's me, not actually Vesper Arcade, it's Mir, and today I have a video about anti-airs. Now this is a huge topic and it is really important to understand how to play Street Fighter 6. This is important on any level of play, from beginner to intermediate to advanced, but especially early on where people like to jump like crazy, uh, I would pay extra attention, you know, if you're a beginner, to the contents of this video. Now, as I mentioned, this is a very big topic, so I'll probably have to split the contents of this video into multiple ones. But today I want to talk about the very basics, understanding how anti-airs work and how to find them and talk about all of their properties, including speed, range, damage, and basically how to use them. So first things first, I want to show you a feature that comes with Street Fighter 6 in training mode. And this is something that is very useful to practice anti-airs. So if you open the menu and you go to the simple training settings here at the end, you know, if you cycle through the top, you'll see anti-air practice. When you turn this on and apply the settings, you'll have a dummy Ryu jump at you with a cross-up attack that actually hits crouching opponents. And um, you'll get to be able to practice your timing for your anti-airs. So if you see here, it jumps at you with a jumping attack. And sometimes it jumps in place to beat your anti-air so that you only uh, anti-air when he's actually jumping on you. And here, you get to practice uh, your own anti-air. It could be normal anti-airs, it could be you know, your DPs, what, what have you. And you get to practice the timing and different ranges, for example. And this is a really useful feature that you have in the game. It makes it so that it's very easy to start practicing immediately without having to record the, the jumping yourself. Although that's something that you might want to learn and we'll talk about it in another video. So really, what is an anti-air then? An anti-air in the context of Street Fighter is basically any attack that can hit an opponent jumping at you while keeping you safe. This is really important because uh, they can be normal attacks, specials, supers even, but the important part is that they hit the opponent without risk for yourself. Like not every attack that hits airborne is an anti-air, basically that's what this means. You'll notice that some uh, get stuffed very easily even if they actually do hit airborne opponents. A great example of this is uh, doing a standing light punch. So if we set the opponent to jumping here, there's neutral jump. You'll see that my uh, standing light punch can hit him uh, fairly cleanly, right? And at first you might think, wow, this is, you know, pretty good anti -air. It's fast, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it's really easy to execute. So maybe I should use this. However, if we then set uh, the dummy to actually jump at us, uh, and this is using the uh, simple training mode settings from before, you will see that uh, if I try to anti air with a jab, I will get stuffed every time. That was a punish counter, that was a counter hit. Uh, you know, like I traded there, that's the best situation you can get, but most of the time you're just gonna get stuffed. So even though this attack looks like it would hit uh, an airborne opponent, it just doesn't work. So ideally, when you're looking for uh, an anti air attack, you want something that can beat jump attacks clean, requires the least precise timing possible as well as uh, doing the most damage while also being easy to do in a pinch. Now, if you found an attack that does all of this, congratulations, your move is overpowered and it's gonna get nerfed. Normally, anti-airs don't actually check all these boxes. So the most valuable ones are the ones that check the most, but like I mentioned before, uh, usually it's just a few of these. This is why moves like um, uh, a Shoryuken, like Ken has, for example, are extremely valuable because um, these attacks are completely invulnerable to airborne attacks, as I will demonstrate in a second. As you can see, I did it so late that I got a punish counter there. That's a counter hit. But these attacks are extremely reliable and work very well as anti -air. And this is true in Street Fighter 6 for all versions of these sort of attacks. Uh, as opposed to, for example, Street Fighter V, where it was only one specific version. And this often includes the Overdrive version as well. Now, the weakness of the Shoryuken, as opposed to uh, a normal anti air, like for example, Crouching Heavy Punch, is that it requires a more complicated motion. In the case of the Shoryuken, is the traditional forward, down, down, forward uh, Shoryuken motion, uh, which could be difficult to do in a pinch. There are some shortcuts to help you do it uh, more consistently as anti airs. But at the end of the day, you're not always ready for a Shoryuken. Even pro players sometimes miss them. So that gives you a reason to use uh, normal anti especially if you're thinking about a million things and you're trying to do stuff on reaction. Now, if you're accustomed with the concept of a hitbox and a hurtbox, the reason why anti-airs work is because the hitbox 
usually protrudes outside the hurt box, making it possible to anti-air attacks without getting hit yourself. Unfortunately, the game doesn't show any of this, so I recommend looking at this online, but you can still figure out what is an anti-air in training mode just by basically trying it out yourself until you see if it works or not. Usually, attacks that reach high up are uh, good anti-airs, something like uh, Luke's Crouching Heavy Punch here is a great example, and it's best if they're also crouching attacks because they tend to keep your hurt box a little bit smaller, you basically are a smaller target for the jumping opponent. As I can uh, demonstrate here with Ryu, you can see how early I can hit Ryu with my Crouching Heavy Punch and still uh, anti-air. I can delay it a little bit and will still work. So this is an example of a great anti-air attack. Some attacks even shrink your hurt box. We usually call this low profile. It basically means that you're even smaller uh, than your crouching stance. So this gives you more time to anti-air. And in some cases you can go under certain attacks completely because they're not actually uh, able to hit someone that is that low to the ground. Like as, in, as I can demonstrate here, uh, Dalsin's back heavy kick. Uh, you can use it as a normal anti-air, but as you can see, I can do it really, really late and it still works uh, fine because um, Dalsim is uh, shrinking his hurt box a lot and is able to hit Ryu very close to the ground. Some attacks at very short range, but they can hit opponents right above you. And these are great for stopping jumps at ranges where they could potentially cross you up. Like for example, uh, Ryu's back heavy punch is a great example of this. So when I have uh, the opponent jump in at me, you see how the back heavy punch is really good at stopping uh, people that are trying to cross me over and it's actually quite fast So this is uh, pretty useful to use on reaction since it's a back command You can use it while walking back like that Now these attacks are risky to use when someone is jumping from far away because they might whiff You'll notice that when you're trying to anti-air someone that is pressing a button in the air You can still hit them even from uh, surprisingly far and this is because uh, pressing a button in the air basically makes you bigger it increases the size of your hurt box and so it makes you a bigger target so you'll see that a back heavy punch can work even from surprisingly far away if the opponent is pressing a button the problem with this is that the opponent doesn't do anything uh, my attack is just going to whiff entirely and then they can punish me for even attempting that So for those kind of jumps, you want to use attacks that have a longer range, but you have to keep in mind that those sort of attacks usually have the opposite problem, where they have trouble hitting opponents that are right above you. So like in the case of Ryu, is a standing heavy kick is a great example of something like that. Most normal anti-airs will air reset when they hit an opponent in the air. So that means that the opponent flips out and is not actually knocked down. So the moment they land on the ground, they're free to act immediately. So for example, Honda's uh, sending heavy punch works exactly that way. As you see, Ryu flips out and he's not knocked down. He just lands safely there and again, jump immediately after if he wants to. Better anti-airs, a knockdown, and this is true for basically every special move in the game as well. So like for example, Honda's heavy headbutt is an anti-air uh, because it has uh, actual invulnerability to jump in attacks as I'll demonstrate here and you'll see how it knocks down. On top of doing a massive damage compared to the standing heavy punch. In some cases, certain anti-airs can lead to juggles, which means that you can continue the combo afterwards and do more damage. So for example, we use a standing heavy kick we saw before, right? You see how uh, it knocks down the opponent right there. But if I'm at the right range, I can even combo something like a sweep. And uh, basically at every range, even from very far away, I can combo a super, which makes it actually fairly rewarding to land. Some attacks need to be canceled to combo, uh, for example, Donson's back heavy punch, even though it knocks down, as you can see here. Uh, it has so much recovery that I do not really get a combo, even if I try to slide, you see that, you know, I just don't have the time. So what I want to do here is, uh, for example, is uh, Yoga Flame, uh, or even uh, one of his supers. And uh, the reward is actually quite high if you do manage to land it. So this is important to know. 
Another example would be something like Chun Li's standing heavy kick, which can cancel into her stance. Normally, it's a it's a knockdown end here like this, but if you do cancel into the stance, the reward can be actually quite high. Uh, you can even cancel into a super if you really wanted to. These kind of end tiers have the highest value because the potential damage that you can get out of them is quite high. And in some of these cases, you can even use them to cancel into drive rush to get a bigger combo and continue that way. Speaking of drive rush, you can react to certain situations by doing broad drive rush into an end tier button. And in this case, uh, the end tier will knock down and uh, potentially give you the opportunity to continue the combo, even if it normally doesn't. So in the case of Gao here, for example, if I set the opponent to uh, neutral jump, you'll see that my crouching heavy punch uh, flips them out in the air normally uh, because it's just this sort of attack. However, if I do it out of a drive rush, you'll see that it does knock down. And this is a special state where uh, basically I can follow up with anything I want. So uh, I can even get a combo in the right situation. And this is something that happens uh, fairly often when you're playing as Gal, as people might be neutral jumping over your fireballs or jumping over a fireball. And if you're drive rushing into them, you can get uh, some very high damage, as I'll demonstrate here. Keep in mind when testing anti-airs in training mode that in Street Fighter 6 anti-air attacks will always score a counter hit or a punish counter as long as the opponent press something in the air. So we have Ryu here doing the, the jumping attack. So like when I press crushing heavy punch uh, that early I get a counter hit. But even if I press very late for example uh, a flash kick you'll see that I still score a counter hit. Unless I press extremely late in which case I will get a punish counter like that. And uh, what this means in the context of Street Fighter 6 is that you get 20% extra damage on all your anti-air attempts as long as they're actually uh, hitting an air normal. The only way you would get a natural hit is if the opponent is not doing anything, like for example, neutral jumping and not pressing anything or doing an empty jump. And you'll see that all of your attacks uh, get natural hits in this case. This could be useful because some anti-air attacks have uh, special properties on counter hit and punish counter. So you have to know uh, when you're going to be able to use those extra properties. Again, in the case of Gal, there's a very easy example where if I do down for the heavy kick on an empty jumping opponent, you'll see that they flip out. However, if I do that on uh, an opponent that's jumping in on an attack, it will knock down instead, as you see right there. And this is important because this move is cancelable. So uh, I will be able to follow up with a combo. Speed is also very important, especially for normal anti-airs as they do not have any special kind of uh, invulnerability. High reward anti-airs tend to be slower and as such harder to time. So doing a faster anti-air can be more valuable because basically you're risking less, even though the reward is also lower. So in the case of Chun-Li here, I have a standing medium kick and standing heavy kick. And uh, as you can see here, standing medium kick is quite fast. It has very high vertical range. It covers right above my head. Very easy to end here with this normal. However, the reward is kind of low. If I want to get better reward, I want to use standing heavy kick. Not only does it knock down, but as I demonstrated before, it is cancelable into the stance. And uh, from, uh, from that attack, I can get, you know, like a full on combo. So the damage can be quite high, but obviously if I do it very late, you'll see that you get counter hit. So sometimes the reliability of having a normal that is fast, even though the reward is not very high, can be very desirable, especially if you're uh, doing it on reaction in a pinch. In the case of special moves, uh, slow ones risk getting blocked if you do them too late, even though they might be invulnerable. So for example, in the case of Zangi, if you have his uh, Lariat, and his OD layered, which is faster, and you can use these to end here. However, you have to be careful because if you do the layer too late, the jumping opponent might be able to block. So demonstrating on a normal jumping attack, you see how reliably I can beat Ryu. I have a recording of Ryu right here, set to do a jump in and then block. And I'll show you how if you do the layer too late, it can actually get blocked and you risk getting punished. As you see right there, the jumping attack didn't actually connect, but Ryu was still able to block my anti-air attack. 
This is especially useful to know for uh, wake up or maybe out of the recovery of a move as you can bait people to do an anti-air in a situation where they won't have enough time to hit you because the anti-air is too slow. Now, you might have heard these referred to as safe jumps when it comes to uh, setups, for example. And a very, very basic example here is when DJ does his uh, heavy up kicks. I can do a jumping heavy kick right afterwards and he's going to be able to hit Guile. However, if I set him to do a uh, light flash kick on wake up, you'll see how I will be able to block even though I did the jumping attack. Like that. And then I'll be able to punish. Something to keep in mind is that certain characters have die kicks or other moves that change their trajectory in the air. These are particularly useful to bait out certain anti-airs, especially if they have uh, bad coverage or require specific timing. So for example, if I try to anti-air with reuse back heavy punch, which requires uh, some specific timing, as I just mentioned, you'll see how Kami's dive kick here that I have recorded will make it quite difficult for me to do. As you see, she scores an entire punish counter on me, so this can be quite dangerous if I'm not careful. Usually specials are much better at dealing with dive kicks because they have uh, long active frames on top of being invulnerable. So in the case of uh, Ryu, we have this Shoryuken, and as you can see here, uh, I can do it fairly early and it will still work, but I can do it late as well, and it will also work just fine. And assuming you're accounting for the different timings, you'll notice that die kicks often have huge hurt boxes, and this is to compensate for the fact that they altered the jump arc. This makes them vulnerable to certain options that normally don't work against uh, jumping attacks or uh, certain anti airs just very effective against them. So like in the case of Ryu, this crushing heavy punch has very good coverage, and you'll see how early I can actually hit Kami out of her dive kick. Now, all the anti that I mentioned so far are done on the ground, but what about meeting an opponent in the air uh, with your own attack? And these are called air-to-air -air attacks, as you can imagine, and they can be very valuable because often they are more rewarding than grounded anti -airs. and in some cases, it's actually all that you have. So right here, I have Marisa, who's uh, well known for having some, you know, questionable anti -airs. The Crunching Heavy Punch is quite good, but it is kind of slow. She's also a very tall character. Uh, she has uh, a special move that she can use as an anti -air, but again, it's quite slow. So sometimes you'll have to meet the opponent in the air. So when Ryu jumps in at me, as I mentioned before, I can anti -air with my Crunching Heavy Punch and it knocks down. But if I want uh, a bigger reward here, I can meet him in the air with Jumping Medium Punch, Medium Punch. And as you can see, I'm actually hitting Ryu before he can even do anything. In this case, I'm even getting a normal hit instead of a counter hit. Um, as you can see, the jumping attack, the air to air, doesn't actually beat the jump in. I have to do it preemptively. And the idea of this is that if I'm particularly ready for the jumping attack, I can use uh, my air option to uh, get a better reward. And in some cases, maybe maintain a better screen positioning or for example, the knockdown situation afterwards that is more advantageous. A universal option that every character has is a jump pack light punch. This is uh, quite fast and uh, usually has uh, decent coverage in front of the character. And this is particularly useful when someone is jumping very close to you, as you can do it from a jump pack like that. This can be used to keep an opponent in the corner, for example. And uh, in general, it's mostly to maintain the screen position. But most characters usually can upgrade this by doing their jumping medium punch uh, because uh, it often knocks down and in some cases it is cancelable. So like in the case of Jury, you see how the jumping medium punch there knocks down. And uh, like I said, in our case, you can cancel it and you can get a pretty big reward here if you're ready with the correct combo. Something that's universal to every character is jumping heavy punch, and this is the unique property on counter hit that it slams down the opponent to the ground. So you'll see if I do uh, do it on Ryu here when he jumps, if I hit him before the attack, he air resets, but if I hit him as a counter hit, slams down like that. And if I'm close enough, you see how I switch positions. I can do that from a jump back as well. And this is uh, something that can be useful. In some cases, it can create uh, some interesting combos as well. Air throws also fit in the air-to-air -air category, 
Depending on the character, they might switch sides and can be used for positioning. They also tend to do a little bit more damage than a normal end here. So in the case here of Guile, uh, he's unique because he has two of them. And as you can see, he has one where he uh, throws the opponent in front of him and another one where he throws them uh, backwards. And you can use this in a lot of situations like when the opponent is right above your head and um, you can use it to switch sides or in general just to uh, get a little bit more damage for than your ground and attacks as normally you would do uh, about a thousand damage but with the throw you can score uh, even more. And this is useful on certain attacks that have a punish counter property at any point during their animation. If you air throw them, you will get a punish counter air throw, which is actually quite rare to see. And it has a special animation. I guess I can show it right here. And um, this will give you a hard knockdown, just like a grounded uh, punish counter throw on top of having uh, extra damage as well. If it's an air command throw, like for example, Geef's air SPD, it will always score a hard knockdown, regardless or not you hit a punish counter which means you cannot back right away, so you're forced into a single uh, wake up and it might mean that you have to deal with some pressure afterwards. So this is plenty enough for today to give you an idea of how different anti-airs work in Street Fighter 6 and how to use uh, your anti-airs to improve your ground game. This will make the opponents think twice about jumping because if you use the correct end tier for the right range, uh, you'll be able to stop their advance from the air reliably. And especially if you start uh, optimizing the damage by using more effective end tiers when you're particularly ready, they will lose a lot of health just by trying to approach from the air. This is a very important skill to learn and it's not just for beginners, you will use end tiers at any a level of play because jumps are still a very important part of the game so it's just something that is going to get better with time and with practice and i highly suggest uh, you start learning now now in the next video about end tiers i want to talk how to apply all of this to different situations especially giving examples uh, with different characters and looking at their whole tool sets tips on how to figure out how to best use your options and especially with characters that don't have good end tiers how to figure out how to stop your opponent from jumping at you. Let me know in the comments if you found this video useful. If you have any questions or suggestions, also drop them down below. We're making plenty of guides for Street Fighter 6, so if you're interested in that sort of content, please subscribe to our channel. And I'll just see you all in the next video. Have fun with Street Fighter 6, everyone. Bye bye.